20 years ago today, tragedy struck Texas A&M when the iconic Aggie bonfire collapsed. 12 people died and more than two dozen others were injured. Thousands gathered early this morning to remember those who were lost. And tonight, Channel 2's Brandon Walker takes a look back at the day that changed a campus and a community forever. He said from the moment that he came on campus, it just felt right. Because it was such hard work, I think that everybody that was out there was doing it because they loved it. Parents of students who attend A&M are counting their blessings. And wanted to be brighter and bigger and better than the year before. It swayed just a little bit. Um, At 2.43 this morning, a rich and sacred Aggie tradition had fallen. There was little time to think. It's one of those phone calls in the middle of the night. And you dread those, because it's usually bad news. I wasn't sure if I was paralyzed. Paramedics removed 28 people who were hit by falling timber, some critically hurt. My husband's comment then was, I know where my son's going, and I don't want to put him through hell to get to heaven. In College Station, Aggie life is one of custom, principles. Perhaps prime among them a pile of posts that symbolized pride. For 90 years, Bonfire burned Thanksgiving week, a tower of timber built by students. Leading up to the big A&M UT football game. Right up the middle. To build it meant you were all in, an Aggie, true and through. He wanted to have fun in everything that he did. Tim Curley Jr. knew that. He was a fish, a first year in A&M's Corps of Cadets, whose job was to build the stack, securing logs as they crept up and up. Tim was 17, he'd tested out of his first year. Hard work was never a stranger. Although from Tennessee, Tim felt at home at A&M. You know, the muster and silver taps and saying howdy, uh, things like this. Things like the stack. Things went on as they did, although freshmen were up top now, securing logs with wire to the commands of seniors down below. That's how it went, tradition. I was out there because I loved building it. John Comstock, another freshman, was right up there with Tim. One week to the day of Thanksgiving 1999, the morning tradition took a turn, 2.42 a.m. It just swayed a little bit, and then the whole structure just started to fall over. Tradition turned to tragedy as a symbol of school pride came crashing down. There was a number of people that were, were on the stack and that were caught under the stack as well. Tim was among that number. His parents rushed to Texas, where they had to make a decision that no person, let alone a parent, would want to make. It takes a lot of strength for you and your husband to reach that conclusion. We know he had fought hard to stay alive, but he didn't have to fight anymore. And a single tear strolled down his face. And we asked, are you in pain? And it was no. Tim Curley passed away. The 12th life claimed by a collapse of timber. Tim was Bonfire's 12th man. John Comstock knows that fight to live. I started to take a turn downhill. And that's when they decided that the bone in my left leg was rotting from the inside out. And so they had to make the decision to amputate. We're back here. The bonfire is getting lit now. Comstock's story is the focus of a new documentary called The 13th Man. Poetic the reference, not because of what he almost became, but who he is after the fall. And I speak to this day under the name The 13th Man. Life cycle is turned two decades over since that morning. A&M hasn't had another official bonfire since then, yet embers of the stack collapse linger. I've relived a lot of good memories, and we have a ton of them. Um, and to me, the good memories are what help you heal. The Curleys moved to Bryan from Tennessee to be closer to the Aggie community. Janice Curley penned a book on her healing process. It's called The Chance to Say Goodbye, Hope for Grieving Parents. Meantime, while bonfire no longer takes place on campus, students have resumed an unofficial bonfire, which burns every November. It takes place off campus, and this year's is scheduled for next week. I'm Brandon Walker, KPRC Channel 2 News.